Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 18th of July, 2023. Coming up the Tuesday rant, the Cresting Up podcast. Trudeau booed at First Nations Games. Inflation down by 2.8%. Is it a good thing? And a possible cabinet shuffle on the horizon. All that more come up the podcast. Please stick around. Viewer and listener discretion is advised because I smoke cigarettes and I like to swear. See you in a bit. Cheers. <laughs> Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, another Tuesday rant here in the Christian Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, and as the tally card said, yes. Trudeau booed at First Nation Games. Inflation down by 2.8%. Is it a good thing? And possible cabinet shuffle. That's right. Well, anyone who boos Justin Trudeau and his party and all his BS that he has stood for the past eight years, I would say all the power to him. Why? Why not? Because uh, Justin Trudeau has screwed around the First Nations and veterans and seniors and you, my wonderful fans and friends out there. The taxpayers are like the past uh, eight years. So since 2015, everything that Justin Trudeau has discussed or laid out or planned to do, well, some of it he's planned to do. He's planned to tax us and screw us highly and heavily, of course. But hey, you know, what can we do about that kind of thing, right? You know? People like to say that taxes are are what makes the civilized world go round. That's the price of living in a civilized society. Taxes, taxes, pour that shit on everything. More taxes, more taxes. Two carbon taxes plus GST. Higher income taxes, right? Paying for food, paying for everything else, just to keep Justin and his climate ideologues happy, right? That's what it is. Anyway, a special thank you out there to... Uh, the fine people at Northern uh, Perspective. I was on their live stream there uh, Sunday night. Uh, minus some technical issues. I had a great time. Great talk. It was good. It was good. And I recommend uh, do not use that special server. If any of my fans out there are watching and listening right now, do not use that special server. I'll mention that later in some other episode. But it just seemed there's technical uh, garbage all over the place on my end, on their end. Uh, we finally got the broadcast out, which was good. Some great questions. So a round of applause to everyone who come out and said thank you and said hello to me. You guys are awesome. Well done. And just a reminder too, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. Share this podcast all over your social media platforms and keep the Canadian algorithm alive and strong and well. So you can see what you want. I can see and produce what I want. And then we can share it around and so on and so on. They tell two friends, you tell two friends, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, carrying on with this episode of the Tuesday Rant. Episode 217, yes, Trudeau booed at the First Nation Games, inflation down, blah, 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 possible cabinet shuffle. So I'll play a little video here shortly on how Justin was booed at the First Nation Games in Nova Scotia. Now, I briefly remember seeing CTV Toronto put up the same speech, and there were cheers and applause all around. Now, if you look at CTV Atlantic and CTV Ottawa, they will promote the whole how Justin was booed. OK, so it's really going to give you insight on how things are really turning out for the Trudeau conglomerate. And I won't call it the Liberal Party of Canada, because firstly, the liberals have done nothing but tarnish their image as far as I'm concerned. Or oh, I could just see the Twitter people just cringing and losing their shit because I have an opinion towards their beloved dear leaders party. Because I remember when the liberals actually meant something. I remember the liberals actually stood up for proper liberalism, not totalitarianism or this woke progressive crap that they try to call politics today. All right. I remember when liberals were actually liberal, meaning they liked the term liberty. They didn't say freedom. They didn't say stupid things like, uh, uh, you, know, you know, check your privilege and you should be ashamed and you're just an angry white man, you know. I'm angry. Yeah, I'm a white dude, but I'm not just an angry white man. I'm a taxpayer and I'm a husband and I'm an uncle and a veteran, blue collar laborer. Did I mention taxpayer, just like yourself? Yeah, there you go. So anyhow, carrying on with this episode. So I, I really don't understand why these individuals, especially in the liberal cabinet, 
are doing their damnedest to try to win hearts and minds and win favors again, especially with the First Nations people. Okay. Yes, they were the first Canadians. They were first Americans. They were first Mexicans. They're the first people here in North America, uh, well before the Vikings went to Newfoundland, well before Christopher Columbus discovered America, right? But we also live in a society now, right, too, where we can cohabitat and get along. That's the way I was raised. Right? My best friend from high school. I've known him since 1990. He's Dene. And no, he's not the token native guy or a token this, or a token that. He's an upstanding citizen, and he's a good person, right? He's in touch with the way he was raised, and he's in touch with his roots and his culture, and he's just a good fucking man, you know? He's just a good guy. And I'm friends with him because of his character, not because of the color of his skin, because how he treats people. And the more and more we look at that simple parameter, how well you treat people, how well you treat others, that's all that matters. So every time I see any liberal talking about the plight or the guilt or how they're helping here and helping there, when you've seen where our money has gone in the past eight years, ladies and gentlemen, where you see exactly what has been done and what has not been done in the name of their virtue, then you'll see the light. Okay. I have no hatred towards any race in this country. I never have, never will. There's some ideologies I can't tolerate and I can't stand. But that doesn't mean I'm going to go smash their property. That doesn't mean I want them fined. That doesn't mean I want them fired or destroyed or ridiculed or chastised or called out in the name in the main public and be heralded a witch. No. Try to treat people the way you want to be treated. It's that simple. Were we not taught that as children? Right? Or is that uh, concept a little too scary for the so-called progressive norm to understand? Puts things in perspective now, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Anyhow, here's this video of Trudeau, of course, being booed. Thank you to the fine people at the Toronto Sun for putting this together. You know, decent individuals, I have to say. Toronto Sun's still a decent paper. The Sun News uh, program is, is not too bad. It doesn't matter if you're conservative. It doesn't matter if you're right-leaning, left-leaning. What matters is that, uh, you know, they get information out there. So you listen to yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, and then you decide exactly, you know, how this is working out. Hello, my friends. We have been waiting for this moment. We've been waiting for this moment a long time after the 2020 edition of the North American Indigenous Games had to be postponed because of the pandemic. Yes, it's only about 30 seconds long, but, uh, you know, you can hear it. And, and as I mentioned, too, uh, they also try to make it look like that he was doing the world a favor and everyone just loves him, loves their dear leader, loves them dear leaders. You know, they just love the way he wears his socks and the way he talks down to people and all that kind of stuff. But uh, now you decide, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, self-explanatory. And uh, we know where the putts, sock puppet boy, potato boy is coming from. And he's not really staying on anything. You know, he promised Olivia Chow uh, a good handout. Sean Fraser, the immigrant MP, uh, national MP, promised, I think, something like $100 million to help the immigrant issue that's going on in Toronto as we speak. Uh, according to the latest news report, uh, there's adequate shelter uh, being put in place, or they're going to adequate shelter, so they're off the street. Uh, my logic is this, is that if you want to bring people over to Canada, and I'm all for it, I'm all for immigration, there has to be a plan on how to house and clothe and how to help the less fortunate. You know, that's just my logic. What do you think? You know, let me know via email or contact me through the description. And like I say, if you like to hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, and Player FM, not to mention Podbean. And a special thank you out there to some of my newest Podbean subscribers. I know I see my numbers going up. So thank you one more time. <laughs> You guys are awesome. For my Podbean listeners, well done. Thank you. Keep subscribing. Keep liking. I know some of my Spotify listeners have gone up too. So excellent. Thank you. You guys are awesome. You know, like, me. like Red Green used to say, keep your stick on the ice. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at krustycanuck.ca. 
And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back to the Tuesday Rant, the Chris King Up podcast, episode 217. Trudeau booed at the First Nations games. Inflation down 2.8% is it a good thing and possible cabinet shuffle. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful Tuesday, 18th of July, 2023. Now, we're going down to 2.8%. Now, on my Twitter feed today, I didn't clip and save or copy and paste. But there's still quite a few liberal supporters out there that are sitting there praising the lemon gods and saying, oh my goodness, we're down with 2.8%. Oh, wow, we're going to have more money again. No, we are not. <laughs> no, we're getting it up the chuff just a bit slower this time. With that, just a little bit of lubrication, just a little, just a tad bit. That's all. That's all. Right? Because I can guarantee you by the fall, <whistles> she's going up again. Right? Because our Fearless leaders in Ottawa are going to find another excuse to spend more and print more money. Oh, it sounds like a wonderful time, doesn't it? Yes, of course. Oh, no, it's not. Because bend over, here it comes again. So it may be down temporarily, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not an economic expert. I never claimed to be. And there's a majority of us out there that are, that aren't, yada, yada, yada. Make a long story short, it does not look good. Because there's always going to be something in the pot that's going to ru ruin the soup, okay? Because they're making such a big stink of it going down again. Why are grocery prices still up? Why are gas prices still up? Why are rents still up and mortgages still up? With the possibility of them going up even higher again, too, in the next few months. So to all you pearl clenchers out there and think, oh, that crusty Canuck is such an asshole. How dare he talk this way about our fearless leaders? Don't say I didn't tell you so. <laughs> well, it doesn't look promising because the more they borrow, the more we got to spend. The more they borrow, the more we got to pay up. The more they borrow, the more we have to look in our wallets and go, hey, this didn't balance itself like you said. Self-explanatory. How else do I, <laughs> how else do I emphasize it, ladies and gentlemen? Honestly, how else do I emphasize it? Right? Now, there's also rumblings, too, that, uh, well, they're not really rumblings. This is uh, some taxpayer stuff I got from the Toronto Sun as well here. I'll just cue it up. Now, during all these inflammatory or inflationary issues that have happened, okay, that have happened in the past little while, okay, a lot of bonuses were handed out. And I'll leave links in the description for you to follow there, too, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, while we're struggling trying to get things done while we're trying to get things paid off and keep our heads above water. We also have individuals at the bank of Canada that have made it really, really hard. And uh, here's Franco Tetrazano, uh, federal director of the Canadian taxpayers federation with a little more explanation. So you guys uh, listen up. Has one job, keep inflation low and around 2%. Inflation last year was almost 7% a 40 year high now most of us would say that when your boss gives you a bonus it's because you did a good job but that's not how things work at the bank of canada um in fact at the bank of canada they get bonuses when they do a bad job and as franco terrazano the federal director of the canadian taxpayers federation points out they did a bad job on their most important job which is to monitor the annual inflation rate in canada and to keep it within a target range of 2% uh, with a leeway of 1% to 3% annually using inter interest rate policy to achieve that. Now, for years, the Bank of Canada, uh, through its governor, um, Tiff Macklin, was assuring Canadians that Canada's interest uh, rates were low and would remain low. Um, he said that um, inflation, uh, he said in June of 2020 that... Uh, Inflation rate was going to remain low, um, and it was a good time to take out mortgages or business loans or other forms of consumer debt. And in November of that year, he said that right through 2023, the uh, Canadian inflation rate would remain below the bank's target of 2%. Now, as we all know, that's not what happened. By June of 2022, um, the Canadian inflation rate was 8.1%, the highest rate in 39 years. And so to deal with that, the uh, Bank of Canada, uh, prior to that, began raising um, the, the bank 
uh, interest rate, which of course affects all other interest rates involving consumer loans. And the bank raised its key rate 20-fold in 16 months from 0.25% other percent interest in March rates. of to 5.0% last week. And that means all kinds of Canadians with debt are paying way more uh, today uh, than they were um, uh, several years ago, regardless of the Bank of Canada's assurances. Now, as Franco Terrazano of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation points out, it's odd, given that record, that from 2020 to 2022, uh, Bank of Canada employees received $55 million in bonuses. That's $55 million. And that's bonuses, not raises. They got $17 million in raises, which I'm not talking about here. You know, people deserve an annual raise. $55 that million $55 million can go on to better things. In, a, in a, a bank where federal taxpayers pay for and where almost half make over $100,000 a year. Now, um, while interest rates were rising and, and inflation was rising, the uh, deputy governor of the, of the bank um, said that, yes, we missed our target and we should be held accountable for that. Well, how do you help? people accountable when you gave them $55 million in bonuses. Now, on Tuesday, Statistics Canada announced that the inflation rate has dropped to 2.8%. That's the good news. The bad news is that necessities like groceries are still up 9.1% over last year, and mortgage uh, interest costs up 30% over last year. Um, you sort of dread to think what the Bank of Canada thinks its bonuses should be for this year when they come. I'm Lori Goldstein of Sun Media. We're always interested in hearing your views, and please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our YouTube channel. Yeah, and that was Lori Goldstein, too, not just uh, Mr. Tetrazino from the Canadian uh, Taxpayers Federation. Thank you very much, uh, Toronto Sun and uh, Taxpayers Federation of Canada, or Federal Taxpayers uh, Federation. Anyhow, as I'm saying, it doesn't look going to look good for renters and mortgages and groceries too. So, you know, you may be able to borrow a, a lot of change if you're lucky, but is it worth it in the long run? Like, is, is it going to be worth it for you and I or the average Joe out there or Jolene to, to get a loan, to put a down payment on something? You know, it, it's hard for Canadians to save money. And that was inspired by the Canadian government. Well, we'll just keep borrowing, keep borrowing. We'll keep printing the press. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Lay all this cash out to help this, to help that, but not about us. It's never been about Canada. It's always been about the virtue, about Justin trying to get his UN seat and his party sitting there thinking they're doing great things for us. Yeah, yeah, and they're not. We know it. You know it. You know, the problem is, is I just hope the voter base gets to know it too, uh, if they do call an election. And I hope they do, because enough is enough. Uh, my vote is non-confidence. What say you? Hmm? We're back after this. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Tuesday Rant, episode 217, Trudeau boot at First Nations Games. Inflation down by 2.8%, is it a good thing, question mark, and possible cabinet shuffle. That's right, I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, and if you like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platforms. You can find the podcast on Podbean, Rumble, Spotify, Amazon, Grow Radio UK, Player FM, and I want to say thank you to my new Rumblers out there. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. <laughs> And especially my Podbean subscribers. I'm getting more and more uh, views and listens. Thank you very much to everyone out there. And a special thank you to everyone who caught me on the Northern Perspective uh, live stream this past Sunday. You guys are awesome. I had a great time talking with uh, Cypher and Fox and answering questions from the audience. And I look forward to more endeavors with those two. So hopefully in my next live stream, I might have them come on as well too. Hopefully less technical difficulties. You know what I mean? And things would be a lot easier for all of us in the long run. Anyway, carrying on with 217. So there's a proposed cabinet shuffle that might be happening. 
Now, I've read just a few squibs and squabs in regards about the cabinet shuffle. You know, Mr. Marco Mendocino, one of our winners of the Polar Vortex of Bullshit. You know, he was so happy that he could shit, you know, because he won that award. You know, I'm saying this sarcastically, but uh, <laughs> he might be moving around. Bill Blair might move around. Dominic LeBlanc might move around. Who knows? They might even move Miss Krista Freeland, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> move her out of the uh, scenario somehow, too. I don't know. I don't know. If it was up to me, I'd have them all fired. I'd call an election right now and get some more blue-collar know-how in there. What say you? Uh, there you go. Hey, see? You're all the answer with me. Right? Get some of that out of the way. But uh, we'll have to see. It seems like every government that is squandered and screwed up somewhere, they'll do another shuffle. Just trying to save face. I remember the Chen government did their back prior to 2006. Uh, before, well, before he stepped down when Paul Martin took over. And Paul Martin did it. And then Harper did it a couple of times. And then, of course, Justin's done it too. But when you look at all these portfolios of all these so-called cabinet officials, <laughs> that's all they effing worry about, their portfolios. They don't worry about their actual record and what they're doing for the people and the constituents. They just care about how much uh, experience they're going to get sitting in certain seats. Now, we can both agree that Seamus O'Regan, shame for the Seamus, I remember him watching watching him on CTV Canada AM where he is praising the troops for what we're doing in Afghanistan. Look at him now. He's trying to sell wind turbines to Newfoundlanders. He's trying to sell heat pumps to Newfoundlanders. And if anybody out there in the free world has spent any time in winter in Newfoundland, you're going to need more than a goddamn heat pump to keep yourself effing warm. I'll tell you that. Okay? So you have a whole cabinet of officials that really don't know what they're doing. Miss Freeland is a business journalist. She's not a financier. Okay. Seamus O'Regan went to university to become a broadcaster. What does he know about labor? Okay. Miss Anand has no idea how to handle defense except promote the woke virtue and the anti this and anti that rather than let's getting the job done. Right. They all know how to sign checks and give money away. That takes no real effing skill, to be honest with you. Okay. But every one of those cabinet members that has represented this country on the world stage, doesn't matter if it's Dominic LeBlanc, you know, doesn't matter if it's <laughs> Miss Arnand, doesn't matter if it's Christopher Freeland or Seamus O'Regan or the former finance minister, Mr. Bill Morneau, who had to step down in shame because he took some payola, took a handout. It's been proven time and time again. They know what the hell. They don't have no idea what the hell they're doing. Miss Catherine McKenna, who didn't run because she stepped down, stuck around for her six years to get her pension. And there's still a question of $187 billion that she had in her control for infrastructure. And it's nowhere to be found. Hmm. Where's the money? Honestly, where is it? Where's, Where's the, the money, 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 Catherine? <laughs> no one knows, right? So, and then when you ask the average citizen, when you ask these questions on Twitter, when you pose these questions to these diehard liberal supporters, this is what you really get. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I have an infection in my ear. <laughs> or they just call you a misogynist or call you a racist or called you a freedomer. But they fail to realize that you need the freedom to express yourself. Doesn't matter if you sit on the left or sit on the right of things or if you're down in the center or if you just don't care. Okay. So my question to you, my wonderful audience out there, is where all is this money going? Now we can speculate China and, of course, the war in Ukraine. And regardless of how you personally feel about that war, I don't like seeing the little guys get stumped on. Nobody does. You want it, you want the underdogs to, to rise up and prevail too. Okay. But while we're concentrating on helping the Ukraines out against the Russian onslaught, we're still failing to look after this country here. Okay. And in a way it's on us too. Okay. 
So my suggestion is we keep asking the tough questions, keep pushing the answers, keep pushing the questions, what's going on, right? And I highly suggest that we should really har harass our MPs politely, of course. You know, I don't want them to snap and lose their nerves and get all scared over bad words because we've seen that example the past five years, how so many of these MPs are really scared of bad words rather than just, you know, standing up straight tighten up their belt and doing their fucking jobs as they should. But hey, you know, who am I? Right? Uh, I don't know. It's just turning to a real shit show, folks. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And really, you know, like the best we can do is just keep calling your MPs, send letters, send emails. And like I've said before, in one of my episodes is that if you send an email, and let's say four or five times, you don't get a response that it obvious that MP doesn't really care. And ironically enough, some from some of my friends in Ontario have told me they've written their liberal MPs and they've had no response. They've been writing them since Christmas. So what's that tell you? Right. So they're not in it for you. They're not in it for their writing. They're in it for themselves. So it's up to, you know, it's up to us to make that happen, to make them focus on what has to be done here, okay? Because I don't want to see violence in the streets. I don't want us to have to come down to doing another convoy again and then having some thuggery on standby just in case we get out of hand, right? And make people scared. We shouldn't have to be scared in this country. We shouldn't have to be fearful in this country. We shouldn't have to fear government. Government should be fearing us for a very good reason. Because they're supposed to work for us. Are they not? Right? Are they not supposed to work for the people? You represent your riding. Okay? I would say we need election reform in regards to certain ridings. Especially the GTA and greater Montreal areas. And especially the greater Ottawa areas too you know, proper representation and actually get people in parliament that want to represent their writings more so than their party. Okay. Not the one country, not the new group, not, not, not the one party, you know, not the one country, but the people. <coughs> it's that simple, right? Simple enough. Right? You represent your people. Whether you represent 25,000 or 50,000, you have to represent your people. You can be a member of the party, sure. But when it comes down to the people in your riding, you might have to bang heads with other party members to get shit done. That's the idea of the parliamentary system. Well, that's the way I look at it. What say you? Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful Tuesday, 18th of July, 2023. Uh, another Tuesday rant will be coming to you next week, next Tuesday, and the following Saturday, another episode of the podcast, too. I won't be around this Saturday to a podcast because I'll be working, so I'll be earning a paycheck to try to keep this podcast running. But like I say, if you uh, like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like and subscribe. Share this content all over your social media platform. Uh, give me a few comments here and there, some thumbs up. Let me know you're out there, that you're watching. Keep the algorithm going and help us Canucks out to get our words out there to other Canadians, just like you and Americans too. And my fans in Britain and Germany, you know, I am grateful for some of the feedback I've had the past little while. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you to my Podbean subscribers for watching and I'm, I'm seeing the views just go right up. It's excellent. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for sticking around with me all this time. Do what you can in these trying times, you know, help your neighbors out, help your friends out. Uh, don't hesitate to give some uh, someone an extra few bucks or a little bit of your time and effort. I know things are tough for a lot of people out there. So if someone wants to talk, the best we can do is just listen and do what we can to help them out. But like I say, ladies and gentlemen, help each other, each other out in these trying times. And always remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me! There is no racial bigotry here! Here you are all equally working! 
This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast.